Thank you, councillors. Welcome to our extraordinary meeting of the council to debate the environmental enforcement contract. I extend a warm welcome to those members of the public who are in attendance both in the public gallery and watching online. <coughs> I now propose that we hold a minute silence in respect of the dreadful events in Christchurch, New Zealand. Thank you. Please remain standing while I ask my chaplain, Reverend David Chester, to lead us in prayer. We pray for the people of New Zealand, for the nations of the world, for their peace, stability and concord, for Parliament, for all places of worship in this borough, and for those who minister to the spiritual needs of our people, for growth in mutual understanding between diverse traditions and cultures, and for the unity of all people all in need and those who care for them, the refugees and those without shelter or work, for the sick, the lonely and the despairing, the aged and the distressed, for all who suffer through violence, warfare, crime, exploitation or neglect. And we offer these prayers, Lord, to you, in your name's sake. Amen. 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 Thank you, David. Please be seated. Displayed on the monitor screens in the form of a seating plan. 
At the conclusion of the vote, a summary screen will display the total votes cast and will list individual members' choices relating to the subject in question. If members are in agreement, we will be using this system for all votes at this extraordinary council this evening. This will require suspension of standing order 18. Do I have a mover and a seconder? Thank you. Councillor Phil Davis and Councillor George Davis. Will members please indicate their support with a show of hands? Those in favour? Any against? I think that's unanimous. Thank you. When progressing our business this evening, I will be adhering strictly to the time limits during this meeting. Please do not ask for more time, as I will have to refuse it. And please observe the lights. So, item three is the environmental enforcement contract. Councillors, we now consider item three on tonight's agenda, agenda papers, to discuss the environmental enforcement contract. Given that the motions as presented are all on the same topic, and to help avoid repetition or duplication of debate, I am suggesting that Council debate all three motions as one, in accordance with Council Standing Order 12 brackets 2. Do I have a proposed and second please? <coughs> Councillor Phil Davis and Councillor George Davis, thank you. Is everyone agreed? Thank you. Your, your agenda pack includes two motions submitted in accordance with the notice required by Standing Order 7 brackets 1 and are listed in accordance with Standing Order 7 brackets 2. May I have a proposer, please, and seconder, please, for both <coughs> motions, it's a formal proposer and seconder. So it's Councillor Alan Bray and Councillor Dave Mitchell. Formally moved, Mr Mayor. Second, Mr Mayor. Thank you. And Councillor Pat Cleary and Councillor Chris Carabia. Second, uh, Mr Mayor. Thank you. Notice has also been given of a further amendment is it an amendment, sorry? It is, yeah. An amendment uh, shown at pages one to two of your agenda pack. May I have the proposed <coughs> and seconders, please? Councillor Nathan Leach and Councillor Phil Davis. Thank you. So, to the Liberal Democrat motion, we now move to the Liberal Democrat notice of motion. Councillor Alan Bray, we now have up to five minutes to speak to the motion. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, and firstly, may I thank you for granting this request from the Liberal Democrat group. Uh, for this extraordinary meeting to discuss the issues surrounding the waste enforcement contract. As our notice of motion indicates, following the granting of uh, your request, uh, our request, Mr Mayor, the Cabinet member announced that the contract for the Kingdom had been terminated, but it was our view that this decision warranted examination alongside the wider question of the Cabinet's waste enforcement policy. And I'm sure members will be anxious to hear details of the mutual agreement to end the contract from Councillor Leach, and to be assured that this was at no cost to the Council. Mr Mayor, when I became a, a Councillor last May, I had to admit that I knew virtually nothing about Kingdom Services. As they devoted almost all their time to the centre of Birkenhead and Wallasey, they seldom ventured into Oxton. That, of course, was an issue in itself. I'm sure Oxton is not much different from other wards, where dog fouling is a significant problem in some areas, and accumulations of litter occur in a smaller number of places. Mr Mayor, there is not a councillor in this chamber who condones the dropping of litter, of fly tipping, or dog fouling, and residents rightly expect our public spaces to get clean and attractive. At my first meeting of the Environment Oversight and Scrutiny Committee last July, I saw the statistics detailing the fixed penalty notices that Kingdom had issued in the past year. The committee was informed that 62% of people considered dog fouling an issue in their area. But Kingdom had only imposed 208 penalty notices for this offence. But in the same period, Mr Mayor, they had issued 11,468 for littering. And the vast majority of these offences were penalties for people who had dropped cigarette ends on the street. Moving to last July, the decision by the then Cabinet member to renew the Kingdom contract was called in by Councillor Gilchrist and the Liberal Democrat group members. At that meeting, several witnesses gave accounts of their experience of the, the heavy-handed and bullying behaviour by Kingdom operatives. And it was clear that members of all parties were disturbed by the allegations they heard. 
And then in January of this year, Mr. Mayor, the legal director of Kingdom Services, Mr. Mike Fisher, appeared before the scrutiny committee and attempted to reassure members about the company's method of operation, confirming that they were not supposed to harass vulnerable people or pursue people who declined to provide their name and address. I have to say, Mr. Mayor, that these reassurances conflicted markedly with the compelling evidence that was compiled by the campaign group we're all, we're all against the Mr. Police. And at the same meeting, I raised concerns about the rude and overbearing way in which Kingdom officers were enforcing a new aspect of their contract, One minute. dealing with commercial waste. I was a lone voice at that meeting, but as members know, this issue rapidly attracted publicity in the press and on TV, causing reputational damage to the Council. At the same time, I received a complaint from a resident in my ward. He wrote, my daughter, who is a single mum, was returning from dropping her son at nursery. In our Ghana suite, she pulled out a tissue from her pocket and known, known to her, a receipt fell from her pocket. A scruffy bearded man came up behind her. She felt frightened and intimidated by him. She can clearly not afford £100 from her benefits. I am surprised that the Labour Council is promulgating this attack on the poorest members of our society. Mr. Mayor, the contract of the Kingdom may well have been ended, mutually or not, but the amendment moved by Councillor Leach suggests that lessons have not been learned. I hope that uh, members will oppose the, uh, the amendment that Councillor Leach is moving and support the Liberal Democrat uh, view that zero tolerance is not the way to enforce this, uh, this problem and that uh, seeking an alternative to Kingdom uh, is also a very poor idea. We need to make sure that we have control of such issues. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Graham. <laughs> so, we now have the uh, Green Party Liberal Democrat motion. Councillor Pat Cleary will have up to five minutes to speak to the motion. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. I think, um, and, and first of all, thank you, Chris, for, for seconding uh, my motion. Uh, I think it speaks for itself in terms of the Community Wealth Building Initiative. If we are serious about community wealth building, it really should be a no-brainer that litter enforcement is conducted in-house. And Mr. Mayor, this is especially true as most of the one and a quarter million pounds paid to Kingdom has come from, as already mentioned, the poorer parts of Wirral and has made our borough even more unequal. Mr Mayor, it cannot be right to consistently and correctly condemn the government for its poverty-causing policies and then implement policies of our own that do exactly the same. Now, Mr Mayor, I'd like to thank, and some of them are here tonight, I'd like to thank the dedicated group of activists who have campaigned tirelessly over the last few years to remove Kingdom from Wirral. They deserve our gratitude. Uh, it's already been mentioned, the Wirral Against the Litter Police group. Uh, on Facebook, they have over 3,500 members. And one of them, I think, summed things up very nicely the other day by saying Kingdom is a cautionary tale of what can happen when you incentivize law enforcement by privatizing legal functions fail to supervise them, and believe punitive methods are the only ways to influence behaviour. The cure was worse than the disease and infected the public space, doing nothing for the public good. Now, Mr Mayor, exactly 12 months ago, we had a motion to Council entitled Zero Tolerance of Litter uh, from the Labour Party. It said, this Council reaffirms its support for a zero tolerance approach towards litter in the borough. Council rejects criticism by the Green Party that our approach towards people who drop litter in Birkenhead is heavy-handed and ineffective. Now, it's nice to see that at least some councillors have come round to an opposite point of view, even though I was the only councillor on that night to vote against that motion. But not only did Council ignore the concerns that I had raised, but this administration extended Kingdom's powers. Now, one would hope that this would raise serious questions about our approach. But instead, we have the Labour Amendment, which continues to push for a zero-tolerance approach, while also demanding a balance between education and
with enforcement. Mr. Mayor, this is very confused thinking. And today I was copied into an email uh, to the proposal and seconder of the, Le the Labour Amendment. I'll read it out. It's from Sean Martin of Liberty Antiques in New Brighton. He says, Dear Anita and Phil, it is with incredulity that I read your proposed amendment for tonight's meeting to suggest that zero tolerance was the correct approach and should be continued brings us back to where we were with the Kingdom. Have you learned nothing from the mess you created with the Kingdom? You then state that you need to strike a balance between education and enforcement. Do you not understand the meaning of the term zero tolerance? It means you are giving a free hand to whoever is enforcing the policy to find everybody without any need to try and educate them. Mr Mayor, the DEFRA statutory guidelines around litter enforcement do not require or even suggest a zero tolerance approach. So whatever new service emerges should include the following. It should include in-house provision to be consistent with community wealth building. It should include a clear code of conduct and it should include uniformed enforcement officers. Mr Mayor, bidding the Kingdom contract is a huge step forward. Can we please, can we please ensure we do not repeat the same mistakes of the past as we move forward. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Kennedy. And now, the Labour amendment to the Liberal Democrat motion. Councillor Anita Leach, you have up to five minutes to speak to your amendment. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Firstly, I would like to say that the zero tolerance approach was introduced as the most cost-effective basis for this council, given that a quarter of a billion has been taken out of their budget by this government. And based on resident feedback as this being a problem for the whole of the borough. Heavy-handed matters addressed were addressed accordingly. Let's not forget that personal attacks have been made on the Kingdom officers. Fixed penalty notices issued were issued in good faith and appeals were dealt with effectively and accordingly. Dog farming is difficult to tackle. As members will be aware, the act of not picking up has to be witnessed. We set a task for the Kingdom officers over a two-day period to tackle dog fouling. And in that two-day period, there was one fixed penalty notice for dog fouling. We've had in-house officers dealing with dog fouling, and that failed to prove its worth. <coughs> Kingdom operates a two-weekly rota across all areas of the borough. So therefore, there is no target here, there, or anywhere else. But it's true to state that some areas generate more litter than others do. Cleansing of our streets currently costs the public purse £3.8 million. We have plans to review the numbers of bins and the places of bins and the number of street cleansers within each area. I'm not sure what Councillor Brain and Mitchell refer to as trivial offences, but if it relates to the cigarette books which have been mentioned, they are extremely toxic. They take a long time to disintegrate and are in da a danger to animals, <coughs> and the toxins from them can get into our, into our water system. So I don't see this as being an insignificant litter. Reputational damage was a concern to me as cabinet member and one of the reasons for terminating this contract. The commercial waste element of the contract was handled badly and again one of the reasons for terminating this contract. However, the, bus the businesses not operating a trade waste agreement are breaking the law <coughs> under the Environmental Protection Act of 1990. Furthermore, waste was being placed into our domestic bins and our street bins, increasing costs year on year, which currently stands at 
£1.2 million to the public purse. It isn't right that businesses should pick up that, sorry, it isn't right that the public purse should pick up legitimate business costs. Accidental litter being dropped. This does not warrant a fine, and any evidence that this was the case would have seen the fixed penalty notices rescinded. It is my intention to make recommendations to the scrutiny committee to review all types of enforcement and all types of education. I am not going to limit this just to an in-house facility, although that will be included. This, these recommendations will be based on evidence of good practice elsewhere striking a balance between education and enforcement, as well as considering any financial implications on this council and the public purse. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Leach. So we come to speakers. Are there any members who wish to speak to the motion? <coughs> Councillor Tony Cox. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'll be uncharacteristically brief uh, this evening. It's just um, I wasn't going to speak at all. It's just something that the cabinet members actually said, which needs pulling up. Well, a couple of things actually. Uh, first thing is, uh, Anissa has just, uh, Council Leach has just stated that dog farming is <coughs> difficult to prove and difficult to prosecute. And um, I wouldn't really uh, disagree with that assertion. However, it doesn't stand up to scrutiny owing to the fact that it is no more or no less difficult to actually prosecute than throwing cigarette butts or throwing paper on the floor. The words you just used is uh, dog filing would have to be uh, witnessed. Well, I thought the whole point of the contract was uh, that any uh, dog filing or litter dropping or cigarette butt flicking would have to be witnessed in order to, uh, to actually prosecute anyway. So I'm afraid that's not a realistic reason to actually um, dismiss having a strike and a, the right balance between what the public wanted, which was more enforcement on dog fouling, and what we actually ended up with, which was cigarette dropping. And I'm not, I'm not uh, dis disputing the fact that um, dropping cigarettes uh, ends all this and is important, it is important and shouldn't take place, but the balance was completely wrong and we brought this up on numerous occasions on the, uh, on the environmental panel and nothing took place. Secondly, uh, I think the, uh, the, other, the other issue was regarding the, uh, the inform, enforcement of uh, waste with uh, commercial waste and uh, I think the, the approach that was taken was ridiculously heavy handed by Kingman um, and I, I like the way that you're actually stepping away from it as an administration because ultimately the accountable parties are sat there and you are the name on the uh, paper as the cabinet member. The, the reality is, it's yet another indication of a piece of outsourcing with the civil service level agreements with the uh, chosen contractor as being completely inappropriate, which is what's allowed it to take place in the first place. So whilst Kingdom actually did, um, uh, the, the approach that they actually took was completely inappropriate and heavy handed. Ultimately, the responsibility lies with the cabinet member, the leader of the council and the Labour Party. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, it's good news that the Council's contract with Kingdom has been terminated and the Cabinet has responded to the strength of public feeling on this issue. Um, as elected members, we will all have received reports of heavy handed and oppressive behaviour by Kingdom, but we'll also be aware that the contract with them didn't produce a cleaner will, which was the purpose of the contract. It didn't give us the standard of service that the borough needs. That it's been terminated is an excellent example of the power of ordinary people and they're all and sundry are jumping on the bandwagon now to claim the victory as their own. Everyone can see that in fact it was a, bit a victory for people who are not normally aligned to any organisation making their voices heard. There are still questions to be asked with answers needed as to how council taxpayers' money has been spent on this organisation. But the underlying problem was the quality of the contract agreed by the council. Quite what would, happen, what would have happened had Kingdom not agreed to a termination earlier of the contract, 
um, is another matter, but I suspect it would have been costly for the council. With the situation as it is, and so many of the council uh, services the council responsible before being delivered externally, whether you agree with that or not, the absolute requirement is that contracts actually guarantee that the service we get is the one we want for the borough. This contract not only caused outrage across the world, but it didn't give us the right service. There didn't appear to be anything in the actions of the Kingdom that was aimed at preventing or educating people about the problems literary causes. It was all about meeting targets for fixed penalties and bringing in the revenue. So the contract was wrong and it isn't the only one that's not delivering a good service. The street lighting, highways maintenance, ground maintenance and tree maintenance are all falling well below an acceptable standard. So I will be supporting the two notices of motion in welcoming the termination of the contract and against the Labour Amendment, as the two paragraphs, as has been pointed out, are contradictory. And I'm also adding my voice to the call for a refocusing of council attention to concentrate on improving frontline services in customer care. Thank you, Mr Mayor. I don't think anybody in this chamber would disagree about the need to ensure our streets are kept clean and the waste of train waste is disposed of responsibly. As Liz is one of the most frequent complaints we all get in this chamber um, across the world. And yes, it's got to be enforced. Well, Mr. Mayor, the approach has been one of education and communicating the message, as we are saying in our amendment, rather than the heavy handed way that characterised the previous contract with the operative of that kingdom. And while I'm sure they suffered abuse, which is totally, totally unacceptable, it's nonetheless beholden on all of us as elected members to represent our constituents first and foremost. And small traders told us in New Brighton time and time again of the way they were left visibly shaken by the behaviour of these privateers. The culmination, Mr Mayor, the sorry state of affairs was the trade waste element being added to their contract, which resulted in us being bombarded with emails and a record number of complaints, far too many to go into in this three minute speech. But it will give you just one that stood out for me and summed up the way our traders were treated. It came from a business in New Brighton who said when a kingdom worker came in and saw she had no commercial waste, he said the newspapers sweet papers and sandwich wrappers that she was about to dispose of were trade waste and that she needed a license. She said she was astonished as they have a second hand shop and they don't generate business rubbish. She said she had emails from the environmental agency and um, confirmed items such as sandwich or sweet wrappers were not counted as business waste. But this didn't match the kingdom because to compound matters she received a letter stating she was receiving a fine signed by the appropriate council officer and stamped, would you believe, with Barnet Council. Yes. With another one stamped Waltham Forest Council. Yes. No apology was received for these mistakes. I wouldn't mind, you know, they were obviously mistakes and somebody authorised them along down the line. Uh, and, and all the worry, of course, yes. you couldn't make it up, Mr Mayor. Is there any wonder our traders were so incensed? Over the weeks, we continued lobbying with our businesses who put in, stir put in a sterling role and the Wallasey constituency Labour Party uh, to get the fines rescinded and eventually, eventually to terminate the contract. And credit must go be given to our Labour executive and administration for listening and acting upon it. We now need to learn definitely the lessons that no good comes from us getting into bed with privateers whose ultimate aim is to make money at the expense of our values of public service. That's their ethos. Kingdom with everything, labour or not, in the dealings with people and businesses to show no compassion, no mercy, no empathy, no understanding of people's plight. Their cruel target-driven culture was at the expense of our residents' quality of life and our traders' businesses, as we saw time and time again in New Brighton. Please conclude. Mr. Mr. Mayor, to finish, we do need an in-house solution with our own workforce that is fair, proportionate, considered and well thought out, and that is thoroughly scrutinised, learning the lessons and mistakes of the Kingdom contract and the way it was handled is a vital first step 
to achieve in that. Thank you, Mr. Bear. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, my, my colleague, Councillor Cox, I wasn't going to speak tonight, but then I read the Labour Amendment uh, and heard <coughs> Councillor Hill speak. Uh, and I haven't heard Councillor Hackett, so I think it's even more important that we speak now. Councillor Hackett, I'll address you first, and that you know, you referred to privateers. You know, these privateers were being directed by the Cabinet Member. The yeah, Cabinet yeah. Member is ultimately responsible for the actions of these privateers you refer to. So please, and as regards to Councillor Leach, from Mr Mayor, I'm absolutely astounded that she started her speech by blaming the government for their actions. <laughs> she actually blamed the government for actions. How she has a brass neck to sit there, having learned nothing from anything that's gone before, having caused nothing but upset and distress, and to put in here that you'll continue with the zero tolerance <coughs> is absolutely astounding. You really need to start listening to what people are saying. Yeah, like everybody else, I don't want our streets littered. I don't want dog bowing. And I'll be the first to scream and shout when it happens. So I don't tolerate littering. I don't tolerate dog bowing. And these people need dealing with it. However, there are, there's more than one way to skin a cat. And your approach is simply to say, you've done it, you're guilty, end up. There are other approaches. Education. Talk to people. Listen to, the, to what they have to say. Don't just release your privateers upon whoever is doing the dirty deed. It's not acceptable. You talk about scrutiny committees. You've got a lot of stolen and scrutiny committees, that's on each. But you still haven't listened to the scrutiny committee who gave you an instruction or a direction or a recommendation, whatever you want to call it, to bin the PSBA. It didn't ask you, it didn't ask you to talk to officers. It didn't ask you to take further action. It asked you quite clearly to bend the public space protection order. You have not listened. It seems your hearing is selected with student committees. In an email to me, in response to one from me to you, you said, I wasn't a cabinet member when this contract was agreed by the scrutiny committee of all parties. Well, the scrutiny committee did not agree the contract. It doesn't have the power to do so. The cabinet member at the time agreed the contract. You're the cabinet member now. I think, having set your privateers loose and to come here and, and say, not me, I'm not guilty, you are guilty. You should do the honourable thing, you should resign. Woo! Woo! <laughs> Councillor Steve Parks. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Oh, here we go. I do want to pay credit to two individuals um, in, in this hall and what seems to have turned out to be a fairly solid mess. Uh, that is the cabinet member who took his decisive action, action when the uh, trade waste contract seemed to be being mishandled. He immediately withdrew and said, we no, no longer go now to enforce this particular part of the contract. And then, obviously, by using that and investigating how that was dealt with, uh, took the brave decision to terminate with Kingdom. So uh, it's not an easy decision um, for any cabinet member and I, I pay tribute to, to him. Also, I want to pay tribute to Tony Jones, Chair of our Environment Scrutiny Committee, that on every single item, every single agenda, we had the Kingdom contract under scrutiny. And we did our job and we investigated them and we took people on board and we did dug into the figures. I think we, we have actually got to come to a solution here where any piece of legislation that is aimed at behavioural change has to have an enforcement element. It has to have an enforcement element. And I can quote other legislation. When drink driving come out, a lot of people said civil liberties, we well, had to back it up with breathalyzing people and charge them if they broke the law. The seatbelt legislation, club click, oh shit, sugar, sugar <coughs> again. Uh, club click campaign, but that was backed up by people being uh, arrested if they didn't wear the seatbelt because it changed behaviour. And you go on, smoking in, indoors, people cried, civil liberties, but we actually had to change behaviour by enforcement. So the will, whatever happens in the future, will have to be an enforcement element to anything that goes forward. Otherwise, now this is the message I am hearing from um, our friends, the Dems and, and you, 
It seems to be okay to throw it in. It seems Don't to be, be okay. silly. Don't be silly. It seems silly. to be okay to let your dog fly. It seems to be okay to let your dog fly. Put it in the back. Don't be silly. In someone's garden tree or bush. That seems to be okay because you will have not realised unless you are ruling out any form of enforcement, there will always be a con conflict. There will always be an interference. In house. Those officers, those officers who have to carry out that policy, because there will be enforcement in the future, unless you are stating tonight it's okay for the will public to willingly throw it at cigarettes, stop them. So we need to get the message to be careful. And we need to be careful about wishing about whichever the solution is to this, because we need to get the best solution in house, whoever. It's about the style of approach. But I am afraid whoever takes over the enforcement arm of this. Will be will be in in, in, a, in a conflict situation because some of the words and phrases that have been used on websites and so on talking about officers as scum, talking about officers as rats, talking about them as vermin, talking about them as not human beings. The first thing to do is to dehumanise the one, and then it's okay to carry on throwing your litter. Whoever takes over this contract will have an awful bit lot of bridge building to do, and I believe we we do by the law and we also enforce the law by consent and that's what we will be aiming for and I hope all parties engaged as they did on scrutiny and never once leave the ship they should come Councillor Stuart Kelly uh, Thank you uh, Mr. Miller. I have hoped to, uh, to be able to address the Chamber in exactly the terms that Steve Phelps began his remarks by Congratulating the cabinet member for taking um, a bold decision. I heard you took it clearly after the requisition was agreed by you, good self and chair, and, and we're, we're here um, uh, debating. So we tried to put down a, a motion that would find support across the chamber, having regards to the question that was issued and the message that the cabinet member sent out to, uh, uh, to all members to explain their decision. So I am aghast, I have to say, to read the terms of the Labour Group's amendments to our notice of motion. It completely cuts across uh, what it is they said. It certainly cuts across everywhere that Councillor Haggis has just uh, spoken to us. I don't know, maybe, maybe, maybe Pastor Haggis wrote his speech before uh, he shared the Labour amendment, or maybe he just hasn't read it. Let me explain then, particularly for the benefit of Councillor Haggis, what it is the amendment seems to do. In part of our notice of motion, we, <coughs> we say, that the zero tolerance approach was misjudged and did not wear. Councillor McLaughlin referred to why it did not wear. Because when one reads zero tolerance, uh, 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 when one reads that we are following the zero tolerance approach, one expects to go to such a bed and find it like a one room. Yeah, it doesn't. What do you mean? What do you mean to wear the It's very clear that it hasn't wear. It's very clear that it's a failure on its own terms. Council Head says in his speech uh, that he's opposed to a heavy handed approach. Well, I'm saying, what do you think zero tolerance is? It's another word for saying we intend to take a heavy handed approach. That's exactly what you're saying. How can Council Leach email us and say, um, we, we will now take some time to reconsider our wider, litter, and dog farming strategy? And then bring to us an amendment that says, uh, in terms, that the zero tolerance approach was an appropriate response. How could she knock out of our notice of motion uh, the condemnation of zero tolerance and then put it in? That's hardly the approach to take if you're uh, seeking to undertake an extensive consultation to help develop a new method of prevention <coughs> as per your press release. The second thing the Labour uh, 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 amendment. Uh, says, is to seek to knock out uh, the, the, uh, our contention that the service ought to be in house. Now, there's a reason that we've suggested that ought to be the model that we look at. Because if one listens to what uh, Kingdom said at the scrutiny committee, he said there is no way it can be run commercially without it being one on a heavy handed approach. That's what he said. They were quite open about it. He said we can't make money unless. We are finding people left, right, and centre, even for mistakes. Mr. Mayor, see, I have no advice already. 
<coughs> Let me conclude just by saying, the Labour amendment seeks to take us back to square one, just potentially without Kingdom. But there's a whole raft of companies out there that will move in, work in exactly the same way, say it's all down to you wanting a zero tolerance approach, and I would ask members of the Labour group to say to the administration, no, let's stick with the notice of motion we've got, abandon zero tolerance, and bring the service back in house, out there, the council are happy to speak to you. I also would like to commend uh, the Cabinet Member Anita Leach for the actions that she's taken. Um, you know, there's been a problem and she sorted it out by cancelling the contract, but I think it's really important that we move forward now in a progressive way and take the initiative that Anita's uh, asking us to do, and that's come together a scrutiny committee involving the public, the members of the Labour Party, the LCF. In, in actually finding a system, finding a model that works for everybody. I think when we walk around the streets of Birkenhead, we walk around the streets of the world, we know there's a problem with litter. We can see it, it's there, it's visible. It needs to be sorted out and we need to, as a council and councillors to be sorting that problem out with a model that we can come up with that's educationally led we do not tolerate littering, we should not tolerate littering and that is the message that needs to be put out to the public. We need to protect our environment for all the reasons that we care about but that needs to be done in an ethical way in my opinion with council workers who are unionised and who are on uh, at, least a living, at least a living wage. They need to be educated and trained to the highest standards to deal with the public. And I look forward to being part of that committee group that Anita is setting up to find that solution. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Councillor Paul Hayes. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor, obviously things have changed since this debate has been instigated, namely the screeching U-turn of the Labour administration here in Wirral. A U-turn which has led them to abandon their friends at Kingdom with their contract being ended by mutual consent. <laughs> mutual agreement, Mr Mayor. Now, the Council's PR machine may have adopted the language of a football <coughs> club's press office just when they parted company with their failing manager, but we all know what's gone on here. Kingdom were bringing such a reputational risk to the Council that they were cut loose. Finally, this Council wised up to the genuine anger that Kingdom and their tactics were sowing throughout our communities. But Mr Mayor, they failed for so long to heed the warnings, to listen to the concerns, even to listen to their comrade brothers and sisters across the water when they kicked out Kingdom in Liverpool. The people of Wirral surely deserve to know why on earth it took them so long to make this humiliating U-turn. Was it the case, Mr Mayor, that the Council had no choice but to listen to local small businesses who Kingdom, with the blessing of this Council, had set in their sights? Set in their sights to issue punitive fines over trade waste and strike a blow to our high streets and small town shopping <coughs> centres which this Council purports to support. Mr Mayor, I pay tribute to those traders and small businesses who have forced this U-turn. Traders in places like Walsey Village and New Brighton who stood up to those trying to bully and cajole them into party